What is the Mixer Brush 2? Why do I use the Mixer Brush 2? My settings for the Mixer Brush 2. How to use the Mixer Brush 2. And some mistakes people make when using the Mixer Brush 2. These are some of the things we'll be looking at in this video. What's up guys, this is Ghana Near Photography. In this video, I'll take you through how to use the Mixer Brush tool in Photoshop for high-end retouching. The Mixer Brush is a tricky tool used together with frequency separation. Most people find it difficult using the Mixer Brush tool, but in this tutorial, I'll help you understand and get used to using the Mixer Brush tool in Photoshop. First of all, what is the Mixer Brush tool? It's one of the brushes used in Photoshop. It's just like any other brush, but it has specific components. Different professionals have different ways of using the Mixer Brush tool, but we as retouchers have our own way. Most of us use it with frequency separation. We'll be using this image on the screen for our purpose. First of all, let's run our frequency separation action. This action will be available for free download shortly. So over here, when you run my action, it automatically selects the Mixer Brush tool for you with my default values. These are values I have used over the years and they have worked for me. You can tweak them to suit your needs. Why do I use the Mixer Brush tool? Well, when I started retouching, I used a couple of other tools like the Lasso tool and different ones, but I realized the Mixer Brush tool gets me the kind of results I want. That's why I'm stuck with it. Before you can use the Mixer Brush tool to its capacity, you will need to input the right settings. If you don't have the right settings, trust me, this tool, even though it's a very, very helpful tool, will give you bad results. So let's go through the settings. First of all, you want your brush to be very soft. So you take the hardness all the way to zero, which gives you a very soft brush. And then when you come here, there is this thing over here that says clean the brush after each stroke. So make sure it's selected. I'll show you the difference for when it's selected and when it's not selected shortly. Now, when we come this way, we have wet, load, mix, flow. What I have found to work for me is wet 30, load 30, mix 30. And with the flow, it's subjective. You can change it to suit your style. Now, I like to build up stuff as I move on. So I always keep the flow low so I can brush over several times before I get what I want. So I always keep the flow at 25%. This is very, very important. Make sure this is selected. Otherwise, you will have some undesirable results. And also make sure sample all layers is not selected. I will demonstrate when you select this and when it's not selected as we move on. Now let's look at how to use the Mixer Brush tool correctly. So this is our Mixer Brush tool selected with our various settings done. As usual on frequency separate, you want to do this on your color layer. So some people prefer turning off the texture so they can deal with the color layer. Some also leave it on so they can see what they do in real time as they move on. Choose what works for you. Some of the best practices of retouching, uh, you should always try and zoom out. Don't zoom in all the way like this and be retouching. Otherwise, you, you end up messing up your image. So just go out like this so you can see the whole image before you start retouching. It's very important to work on the size of the brush. Now let's take a look at this. If this is the size and we brush here, it's going to affect this whole region at a go. Now that is not what we want. We want to brush each region independently. So we go in here like this and then we just brush a couple of times. Now if we look at before and after, you can see the difference over here. So let's undo that. And continue from here. So let's brush. It's all about the little gentle strokes. You don't just pick from here and then go all the way up here. Now let's try something like this. You see what we are getting. This is undesirable because we've picked 
something from the highlight and I just dropped it in the shadows which is deforming the image so let's undo that and then do it right way so for now I'll show you the right way of doing it then later then somewhere later in this video I'll show you the wrong way of doing it so let's start brushing gently I'm using a Wacom tablet so it's easier for me so as you can see I am doing gentle strokes in the highlights and then in the shadows I don't just move from the highlights and then brush it into the shadows it has to be within the range and I keep modifying the size of my brush according to the size of the area I want to brush so these are some of the tricks you need to learn see brush within the region don't pick from this shadow area and then drag it all the way to this place you see what's happened here let's undo it and do the right thing so gentle don't do long strokes don't do long brushes they won't help you and one thing also as you're brushing mostly because your eyes are glued to the same area you may not see the difference so once in a while disable your layers and enable so you can see before and after then you know either you're on the right path or you're on the wrong path so you can correct yourself don't forget that and oh the shortcut key i'm using for increasing or decreasing the size of my brush is the brackets open or close on your keyboard so basically we are brushing I'm sure most of us from childhood we have learned how to brush using poster colors or even painting walls It's the same principle you don't want to just pick one color and then move it to a different color no you want to have harmony uniform brushing and that is exactly what we are doing here so let's go to before and now so this is where we are now now this is looking nice we can still spend some time here and then refine it but for the sake of this tutorial I'll just leave some of those areas out so we can finish on time now this is the right way of using the mixer brush tool let me show you some mistakes people make when using the mixer brush tool first mistake is they don't alter the size of the brush they just pick one big size and then use it all over which will just destroy your image so let's take a, a look at this if your brush size is this big and you brush over here like this you see what's happening we have successfully destroyed this image without any huge effort <laughs> so let's undo this don't pick one big size and then use it throughout your brushing alter the size of your brush according to the size of the area you want to brush now the second thing is people don't change the hardness of the brush if you use a very hard brush and you brush you see the edges become very very sharp look at this see the edges don't blend into the other colors so make sure you select a very soft brush The next mistake is most people forget or don't know and they don't select this to clean the brush after every stroke now let's deselect it so when we brush here let's say we do this you get it and then we come here and we come and brush you see it's carrying on the same thing there to this place now let's brush here 
and see what happens you see it's bringing the same thing because it did not clean the brush after brushing the previous place which is normal if you're using one brush to brush um, a wall and you dip it into blue and brush one side if you don't clean the brush and then you dip it into yellow it's going to carry over the blue add it mix it with the yellow and then brush at the new place which isn't what you want you want just yellow at the other side so it's the same thing here make sure you select clean brush after every stroke so with this if we do it here and then we come and do it here we have different strokes there the next mistake is people brush from one area to another area without releasing the brush so let's take a look at this this is in the shadows so if you just click here and then drag it all the way up here and then brush you see what's happening let me do it here so you can see the difference well if we take it from this area and then bring it up here you see it has carried the darkness here to the light here which isn't what you want to achieve you want to brush here separately and then brush here separately the same thing if you pick from this side and then bring it here you see what just happened so these are some of the mistakes you want to avoid in order to get a good image after using the mixer brush tool check this video for an in-depth tutorial on how to do high-end retouching using frequency separation and the mixer brush tool if this video has been helpful to you don't forget to like it by hitting the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed